class hope you understood the topics of previous lesson well now let's move further in the chapter if in case you have any doubts you can clear them in the comment section today let us begin with the discussion of the previous worksheet first of all so the first question is which part is known as the food factory of the plant answer is leaves question 2 what is the function of the roots in the plant answer is to absorb water for the plant question 3 what is the tip of the lamina called answer is apex question 4 name the parts of shoot system answer is stem branches roots flower bud and leaves question number 5 is draw the diagram of a leaf showing its part so you can see the diagram over here and as i have already asked you to label this part tip as apex so you are going to label it as apex moving further in the chapter the next topic is venation and its type so to understand venation first we have to understand its meaning so if we see a leaf carefully we can easily locate the fine lines running within the lamina forming different patterns called veins now if i show you this leaf for example you can see small fine lines running throughout the lamina these fine lines have no definite shape and sizes they they are running over all the lamina these lines are known as veins and in this picture also you can see the veins are running in a straight line all right so these are called the veins now coming back to the topic definition what is venation the arrangement of veins and their veinlets within the leaf blade is called venation so what is venation how the veins are arranged again you can see in the picture how the veins are arranged on the leaf either they are scattered here and there or either they are running in a straight line this pattern of veins is called venation <clears throat> the next topic is types of venation so there are two types of venation first is parallel venation and second is reticulate venation all right parallel venation now coming on the diagram again parallel venation this first picture of leaf which you are seeing here this leaf is showing parallel venation why it is showing parallel venation because the veins are running in a straight line and veins are running parallel to each other so the veins are arranged parallelly that is why this type of venation is called parallel venation then veins run parallel to each other and join the midrib what is the midrib this center line of the leaf is called as the midrib so veins run parallel to each other and join this center line that is called the midrib next point in parallel venation is this type of venation is seen in leaves of monocotyledonous plant what kind of uh, plants this type of venation is seen in the leaves of monocotyledonous plant now what is monocotyledonous plant that you are going to study <coughs> in your higher studies but in your higher classes but for example just for your knowledge i have made a picture over here you can see this seed there is a seed which cannot be broken into two part for example rice you cannot break rice seed into two part wheat you cannot break wheat into two part it will remain as single seed so 
so such type of seed which cannot break into two part it is called monopod seed and such type of venation is usually visible in the monopotyledonous plant which are having monopod kind of seed all right example of parallel venation where can you see parallel venation on which leaves you can see parallel venation example is lily leaf rice leaf bamboo leaf banana leaf grass leaf etc you can see parallel venation in these leaves all right moving on the next topic or the next type of venation that is reticulate venation now coming on the diagram again now this second leaf which you can see here it is showing a reticulate venation it means that the veins are not running parallel to each other and veins are scattered you can see veins are going anywhere in the lamina so this type of venation is called as reticulate venation so let us see in reticulate venation the veins divide and redivide in number of veinlets all right these small small veins which you can see these small small veins are called as veinlets second point in reticulate venation is this venation is seen in dicotyledonous plants now what is dicotyledonous plants the plants which are having dicot seed what are dicot seed now <clears throat> if the seed can be divided into two parts like if i give you example of a rasma bean that same rasma that you eat at your home can you divide a bean of rasma into two part yes you can divide so the seed can be divided into two parts so this is called a dicot seed di means two so if a seed can be divided into two parts the seed will be called as dicot seed and this dicot seed will be present in which kind of plants dicotyledonous plants as i have told you you will study more about it in your higher classes example of reticulate venation you can see this reticulate venation in the leaves of mango in the leaves of peepal or in the leaves of tulsi so that is it you can once more see the diagram of parallel this is parallel venation this is reticulate venation the next topic is arrangement of leaves now the question arises we have studied all about leaves now you must have seen on certain stems some arrangement of leaf is there either the leaves are arranged in a group either the leaves are arranged opposite to each other the the leaves are arranged alternate to each other so that is called the arrangement of leaf so the arrangement of leaves on stem or branches is called phyllotaxy what is the arrangement of leaf called phyllotaxy all right now why is phyllotaxy important answer it prevents the leaf from overlapping among the leaves so that each leaf get enough sunlight why is the arrangement of leaf so important so that each leaf on the stem or on the branch may get enough sunlight for doing the process of photosynthesis all right the next topic is types of arrangement of leaves now how many arrangement of leaves are there generally there are three three types of arrangement first is alternate arrangement second is opposite arrangement and the third is world arrangement all right now first type of arrangement is alternate arrangement in alternate arrangement you can see the diagram over here 
this is a alternate arrangement in this arrangement only one leaf arises at the node what is node this part where from where the leaf arises is called the node so in alternate arrangement single leaf is arising from one single node as you can see one leaf is arising at this node then coming down this is another node second leaf is arising from the second node coming down third leaf is arising from the third node all right now the next leaf arising on the following node is opposite to the previous leaf now as you can see the leaves are opposite to each other if one leaf is uh, in this direction the other leaf is in this direction all right then another leaf will be in the another direction so leaves are arranged opposite to each other in which type of arrangement in alternate arrangement example of alternate arrangement is you can see this type of arrangement in the leaves of mustard in the leaves of sunflower in the leaves of china rose or rose etc the next type of arrangement is opposite arrangement now in this type of arrangement two leaves are arranged on one node now coming on the second diagram you can see this is one node and from this one node two leaves are arising one in this direction and one is this direction now coming down this is the second node two leaves are again arising from this node in the opposite direction so in the opposite arrangement there are two leaves arranged on one node now the leaves are arranged opposite to each other now again you can see the leaves are in opposite direction to each other you can see in the diagram very clearly example of opposite arrangement is jasmine guava leaf etc the third type of arrangement is world arrangement world arrangement in this type of arrangement three or more leaves arise from a node now if you see in this last diagram you will notice that from one node how many leaves you can see one two three four four leaves are arising from a single node coming down again this is the second node how many leaves are here one two three four leaves arise in a group so in a word arrangement leaves arise in a group and all the leaves will be in opposite direction to each other but they will arise from the same point in a circular pattern as you can see in the picture so leaves form a whorl whorl means a circular pattern example of whorl arrangement you can see in oleander and asparagus all right now these three diagrams are for alternate arrangement of leaves opposite arrangement of leaves and the whorl arrangement of leaves all right children the next topic is <coughs> modification of leaves all right modification of leaves what does modification means a structural change required to perform a specialized function what is modification modification is a change which is required it is a necessary change to perform a particular function so there are three modification of leaf leaf tendril leaf spine and scale leaves these are the three kind of modification of leaf first modification of leaf is leaf tendril the leaf change into tendril you must have seen on certain leaf there is a spring kind of spring kind of structure which is present on the leaf that spring kind of structure is called the 
leaf tendril so in this leaf is changed into leaf tendril and what is the function of the tendril to give support to the plant so when leaves are modified into thin thread like coiled strand they are called leaf tendrils they show sensitivity to touch they coil around a support in order to give support to weak stems to help in climbing example wild pea and glory lily now if you have pumpkin vegetable growing in your garden you can see these spring kind of tendrils in that pumpkin plant also why that spring like of structure is there to give support to the plant because the the stems are very weak so the leaf turn into tendril in order to give support to the plant next kind of modification is leaf spine now in certain plants the leaves change into spines or thorn the very common example of this is cactus you all must have seen cactus so when leaves of some desert plant become modified into pointed spines they are called leaf spines what is the function of spine they help to reduce water loss due to transpiration and spine also help to protect the plant from grazing animal example of leaf spine is cactus so if on any plant the spines will be present thorns will be present will any animal like to eat that plant no so in this way the spine help in protection of the plant also and it also help to reduce water loss which will be due to transpiration and mainly in the desert plants last type of modification is scale leaves in some plants leaves get modified as scale leaves they help to protect the bud these leaves store food and water example dry scale leaves in garlic or fleshy scale leaves in onion now if you cut an onion from the center you will see onion is having certain layers and you can remove those layers one by one what are those layers actually they are the leaves which are called scale leaves and what are the function of the scale leaf they protect a bud in the center you can see the labeling over here bud the scale leaf protect a bud in the center this is the main function of the scale leaf so certain leaves they change into scale leaf in order to protect the bud this is the function of the scale leaf so these are some of the modification of the leaves hope this lesson is clear with you. these topics are clear with you so for today this much is enough thank you students we will continue with the chapter in the next class the worksheet will be given in the lesson shortly thank you